What's up and welcome to another of my Pokemon design videos. You voted for it and it's happening. It's ghost type Pokemon designs. To celebrate this spooky season, as suggested by all of you, I'm creating ghost type Pokemon designs based on Japanese mythology. First up is a Pokemon based on a living clock. Legend says a clock will come to life after a hundred years and this is known as Zorigami in Japanese. These powerful animated objects can control time by slowing it down or speeding it up, and even time travel. And it sounds like it would be such a fun Pokemon. When I was drawing out concepts for it, I explored different shapes for a pocket watch, standing clock, and hanging clock Pokemon. Although I chose the pocket watch for the final design, these others would make a great evolution line for it. Typically I write down design notes for shapes and colors, but this time it's all in my head as I scribble away. It really does feel like I go into a trance when I draw. I'm not really thinking or planning, it's just very spontaneous. Like, I knew I wanted hourglass shapes hidden throughout this pocket watch design to represent time. And there are certain shapes I need, like the circles and triangles, to communicate that this is a clock creature. But it was only after rapidly drawing out ideas that I discovered how I wanted it to look exactly. Design can be an adventure in that way, you're not always sure what you'll find along the way or where it will go by the end of it. Of course, I always go in with a goal of what I want to create, but these drawings can have a mind of their own. My mother fixes old timekeepers and pocket watches in her spare time. This means our house is full of clocks everywhere. We basically live in a clock shop. But this made drawing this Pokemon so easy, there was literally inspiration all around me. Mom talks to me about every clock's needs and parts while she works on them, so I've been learning a bit more about it. Pocket watches in particular use small pieces of ruby in their inner workings. Rubies are one of the hardest materials after diamonds, so it helps the clock function for a very long time. Therefore, I made sure to include red jewels in this design. Any clock that's a hundred years old has got to be durable. Spirits possessing objects is a common belief around the world too, so a Pokemon that inhabits a pocket watch felt so suitable for these ghost type designs. Plus, having a Pokemon partner who can actually hang out in your pocket sounds adorable. No matter what type of character I design, I always consider how they would move and behave and express themselves. It helps to develop their designs more and find a balance between colors and shapes. Like, I imagine this watch would float and fly, but still use its chain to swing and hang while it's sleeping. Tiny details like this can direct your design and help it evolve and become stronger, just like a Pokemon. And although I'm designing a poltergeist, Pokemon is for everyone, so I didn't want to make this little monster too scary. Just cute and strange. Next up is a Pokemon based on the stories of Sunekosuri. In Okoyama, there are said to be these small mischievous spirits that only appear on rainy nights. They look both cat-like and dog-like at the same time, and they try to get in the way of people's paths as they walk. And that's it. They just might trip you and make it crazy tough to get to where you want to go. And this amuses me so much. Many of these old Japanese tales are short and confusing, but it makes for such interesting Pokemon ideas. So I took inspiration from Tsunekosuri statues, paintings, and my cat, who likes to get in the way when I walk too. All while keeping in mind this isn't a very distinct animal and try to give it ears that could either be floppy or pointed depending on your perception. There's also a few shapes in the design to reference water and rain because it only shows up on stormy nights and also dark feet to mimic muddy paws. I've also included coloring on its back that is similar to a calico cat's while also making it look like murky water rushing off of it. Despite this obvious H2O theme, some say Sunekosuri dislike water, so I wanted to show what it looks like scampering out of the wet and towards your legs for cover. It would totally be a dual type Pokemon of Ghost and Dark because there are so few of those and I love that type combination. It makes sense with it only coming out at night too. Colors for this one was tricky because it's both animalistic yet spiritual in concept. There was a lot of brown and tan initially as I was filling in shades, but this made it feel too normal. Eventually I swapped them out for more phantomish purples and blues because this neutral color palette just wasn't screaming ghost. You can see me playing with the shapes a bunch too, it was a journey. Pokemon tend to have very exaggerated but simple designs, so I want to stay on theme with this style while still fusing it with my own. My cat bear sticks his tongue out a ton too, and that feels like something a ghost Pokemon would do. And about now is when I realized this was turning into my cat, but in Pokemon form, so I have to rework the colors and shapes more. But taking inspiration from things you care about can really help you design too. 
there's a familiarity and passion there, so it's enjoyable to draw, and designs always come out cooler when you're having fun. Just be careful not to let it get away from you, like a Sunekosuri dashing through your legs. And this last ghost Pokemon design is based on an Ameona, who summon rain wherever they go. Much how the Pokemon Frostlass is based on a Yuki-ona, I wanted this Ameona Pokemon to match with that more feminine appearance. The concept began with a storm cloud that was spilling out a human-like figure, and as I was drawing it, more ideas flooded into my brain and I went with the flow. This cloud on its head became a shower cap shape, but also a skull by adding a cloud-like jaw around the neck area and the body was almost like a dress with a focus on how rain falls and splashes. It was really fun to explore this character and the design and imagine what it would be like if it really was a Pokemon. In Japan, they hang these traditional dolls made of cloth from the window as a charm for good weather. They look a little bit like floating spirits and it made me think this Pokemon would be scared and run away if they saw them. And perhaps it travels inside this cloud which looks like an ominous face, but actually this Pokemon is really sweet. Having these stories helps me breathe life into my designs and make me care about them. Because if you don't care about what you're designing, it gets boring and the drawing will definitely show this. Now you've seen me pick colors for my designs before and I might deviate slightly from them at times. Here I scrapped the entire palette because again, my colors just weren't very ghosty. There's no way this Pokemon isn't also a water type, but I want to make sure it doesn't look like that's the only type it could be. So this design went through a slew of color revisions and reworks until I was happy with it. Same for the shapes too. This cloud was awesome, but it was dominating this design too much, so it gets a reshaping later. Designs can take a long time, but once you find what works, it's such a great feeling. You get to try things, and if you don't like it, you just try something else. Only downer is deciding everything about a design can be creatively draining. It's very different from drawing what already exists because it takes way more brain power to produce. So don't rush, take breaks. In fact, these designs were created over a span of a few days. When you can come back to a design later like this, it's easier to keep it feeling fresh when you're feeling that way too. And switch things up to keep it interesting. So here's the final design. Thank you for voting and watching and subscribing. You are spooktacular, and I hope you have a happy Halloween. Bye!